In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the CI CD setup that I have done for my Spring Boot microservices applications, which I have got them running on Docker containers on my application environments. And I am making use of GitHub Actions. So my workflow gets triggered as soon as I check in some code in my main branch and then gets deployed automatically on a virtual machine environment, which I'm running locally. You might have a different use case where you want to deploy your build on a cloud environment, whether that's AWS, GCP or Azure. But for my use case, I didn't want to spend that money. And what I have done is created a couple of virtual machines for my local environments, Car Marketplace CI and Car Marketplace SIT. And my deployment happens on these environments that are running locally. We are going to be looking at the build and deployment process, starting from where the code is checked in and then the build is triggered. Once the build is triggered, it runs its unit and integration testing and the code coverage report is pushed to CodeCub. And then once that is done, a Docker image is created and then pushed to Docker Hub. And for deployments, the deployment script is run, which first pulls the Docker image from Docker Hub and then it creates the environment variables and starts the Docker containers. So without any further ado, let's get started. For doing my continuous integration, I'm making use of the GitHub workflows. So over here, I have my GitHub page open. Each of my microservice is present independently in their own repository. So I need to set up my GitHub workflows for each of those repositories for which I need to do my CI CD. For this video, let's take a look at the car info service. So if I go into the repository to set up my workflows, I can go into action. And as you can see, I already have a bunch of workflows available over here, but you could just click on the new workflow button over here to create a new workflow. And you will see that GitHub provides multiple templates for the various use cases. And for my use case, I have just selected the simple workflow. And I have basically just extended this workflow to do whatever I need to do. So once you click on that workflow, it will basically generate a template which you can use to define the workflow that you need. Your workflow file will be stored in a YAML format and it will be stored under .github slash workflows folder. And you can name your workflow anything that you want. So because I already have my workflows defined, let's go back to my source code repository and see how my workflows work. In my source code, I have three workflows that I have defined. The first one is a build and deploy workflow, which basically does a build and then deploys it to a CI environment. And then I have two separate workflows, which are deploy CI and deploy SIT, which I can manually trigger to deploy to the respective environments. Let's first have a look at the build and deploy workflow and understand how this works. I have given this workflow the name build and deploy and the trigger for this workflow is whenever there is a push to the main branch or a pull request to the main branch. As soon as the trigger is initiated, it will start running my jobs. And over here, I have a job called build service, which will basically build my Spring Boot service. And I have named it build and test. Now this runs on a VM that's provided by GitHub, which is Ubuntu latest. And within the steps of that job, it will perform various actions. Now, these actions could either be provided by GitHub or it could be community based. So I'm using a number of actions here that I need to get my build running. So the first thing that I'm doing is generating a build number because I'll be using this build number later, later down the line to version my artifact and my Docker image. The next thing that I'm doing is checking out my root project. I wanted to segregate my root project and my service project uh, because I'm using Maven for dependency management and I have defined my versions that is common across all my services in my parent form, which is the root project. And I have a separate video that I have created previously in which I discussed that structure. So you can click on the link above to visit that video. So once I have my source code checked out, the next thing that I'm doing is reading a Docker properties file. Because I'm building Docker containers, I'm defining a bunch of information like the major version, the name of the image and the name of the artifact in the Docker properties file. And in my workflow, I'll be using that information later down the line when I need to build my Docker image. Next up, 
I am just setting up my JDK 11 and Maven. And then thereafter, I start building my project. So first I build my root project by just running the command maven dash and install and specifying the root pom file. And the next up I build my service. So I run the maven command and because I need to get my code coverage report as well, I'm passing in the Jacoco report plugin and I'm providing the maven pom file and I'm also activating my test profile because all my test cases are actually running under the test spring profile. Next up, I'm using the code curve action to publish my code coverage report to code curve. And you can see over here that I'm providing a secret code curve token. So these secrets can actually be stored in GitHub and then passed as parameters within my workflow. Next action is to log into Docker Hub. And again, I'm passing my secrets from GitHub. So with this action, I can build my Docker image and push it to Docker Hub. Earlier in my workflow, I loaded some Docker properties and I'm using those properties here to specify some of the information that my Docker image requires. And the final action in my build process reads the readme.md file of my service and uses that to populate the Docker Hub description in Docker Hub. The next job in my workflow is called the deploy service CI. And this job deploys my service into my CI environment. And you will notice that I'm running my CI environment locally, which is basically a virtual box image that's running locally on my machine. I'll be discussing a bit further on how I actually set up my self-hosted runner. But for now, my deploy service CI, all it's doing basically is checking out my root project as well as checking out my service project. And at the end of it, it basically runs a deployment script that I have built. And I'm passing the environment that I deploy on and the name of the database. And then I also pass for database password, which I'm grabbing from the GitHub secrets. And this deployment script needs the build service to complete first. So there, thereby I'm specifying the needs build service in, in this parameter over here. With my deployment script, because I'm running my environment on Docker containers, I'm basically loading the Docker properties file to grab all the variables that are defined in, for the Docker environment. From my deployment workflow, I'm also passing a bunch of parameters. So over here, I'm just validating those parameters to make sure that those parameters are actually passed. And then for my actual deployment of the image, I'm basically first creating a bunch of environment variables to specify some environment specific properties, like which particular spring profile I need to run, what is the name of my environment, and what is the name of my database and my database password. Once those environment properties are set and then loaded, I then start my Docker container. So before starting, I first stop my Docker containers, make sure everything is stopped. Then I make sure that I pull the latest Docker image. And once I have pulled the latest Docker image, I then start the containers. And once that is done, my deployment is completed. So if I come back to my GitHub workflows, I have three workflows files that are defined over here. First is a build workflow, which does both the build and deploy action. It does a build first and then deploys it to the CI environment. But I also have a specific deploy scripts. The first script is just to deploy it to the CI environment. And the next script is just to deploy it to the SIT environment. And in a similar way, I can build other deployment script, which then will go in and deploy to other environments along with my production environment. And you will also notice that my build action happens on a GitHub hosted runner, but my deployment action happens on a self hosted runner. Basically, what it means is that when I deploy, I want to deploy it on my specific VM environment, which are these two virtual machines that I've created for the CI and SIT environments. Now, let's move forward and understand how I have set up my self-hosted runners. To install your self-hosted runner, you need to go back into your GitHub repository and then go into settings and then go into actions. And from here, you can choose the runners tab. And as you can see, I already have a couple of runners installed for me. My CI runner run using this agent and my SIT runner runs using this agent here. For creating a new runner, you can click on the new self-hosted runner button. And then you can just choose the runner image that you want to use. Because I'm using Linux virtual machines, I can select the Linux runner agent. And then you need to just run these commands which will basically download and install the runner agent 
and configure the runner agent. I have created a separate video in which I discuss the process of installing and configuring the self-hosted runner. So you can click on the link above to watch that video. So coming back to your GitHub repository, you can go into your repository and then go into the settings tab. And you can see that there is a secrets tab. And over here, you can define all your secrets. And as you can see, I have a bunch of repository secrets. I use the CodeCov token to connect to CodeCov to push my test coverage. And then I also have the Docker username and password, which I use to connect to Docker Hub so that I can push my Docker image. But apart from that, I also have some environment specific secrets. So because I'm running a couple of environments at the moment, I don't want to store my database password in my source code itself. So I'm pushing that password using my environment secrets from GitHub secrets directly. And within your workflow script, you can just specify the environment as part of this parameter over here. And based on the environment, it will pick up the relevant secret that it needs to pick up. So for my CI environment, it will use the CI password. And for my SIT environment, it will use the SIT password. Now let's make a change in my main branch and see the whole workflow in action. Before I proceed with changing anything, I just want to show you my current API. So if I go into Swagger on my CI machine, this is my CI environment. And let me go into the car info controller and let's have a look at my status endpoint. So let me try that out. So as you can see, my status and endpoint is basically returning me the environment code, the version of the service that is deployed, and it's also presenting the host name. And you can see that in this case, because my host is running as part of a Docker container, so that's the reason why it's returning the host name in this format. So now what we're going to do is make some changes to my status endpoint and then see the whole CI and CD process. In my source code, within the status response, I'm just going to add another property over here. Let's say string description. And then in my controller, I'm just going to add the description to my status response. So let's say I just want to provide some static value saying this is the status endpoint. So now we're going to do the whole CI CD process with my build and see the CI environment and see how that changes. Let me check in these changes. So I'm just going to commit these two files, car info controller and the status DAO. Let's say updated the status endpoint to add the description. Let me commit that change and then push that change to upstream. So as soon as I push that change, my build should get triggered because I'm already on my main branch. So let's go back to my GitHub. And you can see that it's already started doing the build. Updated the status endpoint to add the description. It's currently running the build and test action. And you can see that it's actually running all the actions that are present in the build and test workflow. And now it has already started the deploy CI action. So it's currently running the deployment script. And with that, my deployment is now completed. 
Now let me go back to my swagger and execute this endpoint once again to see if the changes are reflected or not. I'm just going to reload the page and see if the changes are reflected or not. So if I go back into my status endpoint, you can see now the description is available in the response. So let's try it out. Uh, and you can see over here that when I execute it, it's returning me this description. This is, this is the status endpoint. And you can also see that the build number is incremented. So with this, you can see that as soon as I do a commit, the build and the deployment process is initiated if my commit is in the master branch and the whole pipeline goes in and deploys my changes. So that's all that I had for you in this video. And I have included a link to my GitHub repository in the description below. And I really hope you find this video useful and thanks a lot for watching.